boobies or not, these are <laughs> our tunnels. <laughs> you can't be talking about boobies, Wilson. He's not talking about boobies. He's talking about the booby traps. <laughs> boobies are traps. <laughs> so you sure that wasn't a love letter in your uh, wallet there? Wait a minute. What? What? No, absolutely wasn't. I can't read that language. I can't read. <laughs> oh, you poor soul. You, we have schools for you. <laughs> no, I'm tired of the facade. We can speak candidly. Fear not, no one is watching. But by and large, these are not the actions of the majority, but a fringe sect of isolated instances. A touch of corruption falls wherever it goes. It has been, as of recently, constricting some of the trade routes, intercepting supplies. And welcome back to the Odd Campaign. This is Season 5, Episode 9. I am, as always, the same individual, Quentin, your GM here, surrounded with a nice full table of players, which we're going to sound off, just give the introductions out of the way, so you all know who the voices are inside your head. All right, well, the question is, how do we know you're the same person? I could be a clone. That's true. We there, have maybe no there's just a, like someone who's a significantly more talented voice actor than me is just copying my voice. Actually, wow. this is all AI generated. This, this is the first <laughs> AI generated podcast episode of Sword Art Online. <laughs> As Jaden would say, thank you, Chat GPT. No, Jaden has uh, Chat GPT write all of his intros. Anyway, hi, my name is Emily. I am here today playing Snow. She's the leader of the Odd Guild alongside with her faithful wolf companion, Achia. Who is the king? He was choking on something. Salt water? Uh, Wilson? <laughs> there's a lot of salt water down here in the ocean, you know? <laughs> I was also choking alongside Nichia. Right. Uh, well, I was going to say Nichia's a sea dog today, but I guess Wilson's a sea Wilson as well. I'm your little sea willy. Oh, God. No. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> we can't free Willy in this episode, guys. And I am RL, the little voice in my head I play is Zana, and the little voice in her head is Alistair. Hi! I thought you were about to say that RL is the little voice in your head, who, and you yeah, are Zana. Yeah, no, yeah. she, th- yeah, all well, of these Well, technically, voices. I do have a little RL, like, viciously narrating everything that goes on in my life. That's called your conscience. Hello, I am Jonathan. I play the character Tama, and he has his faithful companion, Pickle Jar. Always faithful. Blah, blah, blah. Oh my gosh, you're, I just realized the green in your pickle jar really matches the green of your gemstone eyes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like you were made for each other. So as it has been a very cold second, I won't say a hot second because it's been a lot longer than that. So it's we're in the depths of the ocean. So without any further ado, last time on the Odd Campaign, our crew managed to arrive successfully at the underwater nation capital of Thessalia. Enamored by this underwater metropolis and all of its radiant and shining bioluminescent glory, our party attempted to sneak in to the city in a less than reputable manner. Following the lead of Kelly and Dritus, you made your way to a secret back entrance to the city. But even with Dritus' warning to make no sudden movements, as you could awaken the guardian of the trench. I don't know how we're not going to make any, like, noise underwater. You would think we already don't. Make that much noise, right? It's It's that darn pickle jar. Please make no sudden movements. What's considered sudden and movement in this circumstance? Stop undulating. All of what we're doing. So, should we hold our breath? 
If I don't undulate, I can't, like, stay in the same place. I think that's called treading water. Exactly. Like, how am I supposed to just not move? Everyone, move back into this corner. And he's gesturing for you to kind of move your way into, like, this this under shelf where you can kind of hide. It's a little bit more shadowy. You said under shelf? Well, yeah. I know for a fact that they are from Shelf Town. Yeah, see? So he's <laughs> right at home. For me, everyone, if you could please roll a stealth check as you hear the rattling of chains moving ever quicker. 35. 27. 23. You want to give me Nichia's stealth real quick? No. <laughs> Can you please? Because I, I do need it. 13. Ooh! He's a wolf underwater. A big doggo! As you all begin slinking into the shadows of this sea ledge, you see as Drydus almost begins applying a magical effect, veiling all of you in a muted gray. You can tell that while you are not invisible, your presence has been hidden. You no longer can hear the swishing of water or the faint breaths that you're making as he has seemed to cloak your party in some sort of obscuring veil. Is this silence? This isn't shadow blend, is it? And just as all of you hide, you see cresting up from the sea trench. The easiest way to describe it is an absolutely ginormous lobster. You have seen some incredibly large entities within your time in this game, but you can see that right now you are about the size of its eye and it begins making its way, surveying the area. And you can see that while it doesn't seem to have the best eyesight, it has almost tentacle-like feelers that are 10, 15 feet long, and they're kind of sweeping against the sea floor, making its way over to you. Oh, lovely. Oh, crud station. Okay, um, do we move? Just stay here? Is he gonna see us? He wouldn't eat us, right? There's... When certainly talking isn't making the situation any better. However, it won't be able to see us, but if it makes physical contact with us, it will absolutely know that we are not part of the natural terrain. Good to know. So it's like, not like bears where you can just play dead? It was surveying the general sea floor around this entrance, but as it was kind of perusing about, it looked like it was almost about to turn away from you. You hear a pebble from the ledge nearby kind of crumple and fall as it looks like Nichia bumped in to the shelf a little bit and some rubble and debris are falling and the sea creature turns to face your direction. It would not be a good time for a distraction. Probably as good as any. Okay, I used summon monster vibe. And um, let me see the, let me look through the aquatic creatures sure. I can summon. Ex yeah. Instead of just keep summoning sharks, I'm pretty sure I can do more than you that. You could probably do something slightly more than sharks. You what summon do, do? a lady lobster. <laughs> Ooh, a lady lobster. I don't, I don't even know if I could do that, but that would be so funny. Not anything that's that size. <laughs> I don't think it fits. I summon four dolphins and I tell them, swim away, get its attention. Can I communicate basic commands? Um, you, so like very basic, meaning one word. So you can give them standard attack, defend, flee. Flee in that direction. <laughs> sure, sure. You point and you just say flee. And you just hear the, all of them like chitter and echo. <laughs> and they, they all start trying to swim away. Where do you summon them? I would like to do it as far as my range lets me. In which direction? Coming from the direction where Nichia is in. I would do that about 20 to 30 feet ahead of Nichia to make it seem like these dolphins are coming from where that lobster heard that noise. Their swim speed is 80 feet. So are there chains actually attached to this? So yeah, you can see that there are two chains. It seems like where they are situated is actually like kind of around where its arms join to the body around the shoulders. But also that you notice that this is on its largest set of claws. Uh, I feel the need to say because this creature actually has six claws. Ew. You know what that means. Lots of attacks. Multi-attack! <laughs> actually, everyone, for me real quick, roll a perception check. 
28. 30. Even. 22. As you summon the dolphins, they begin darting in the opposite direction, kind of hugging alongside this uh, sea wall as you directed them to go in an eastward direction. But uh, it, it's kind of being cut off by this cliff face, so they're, they're kind of heading in a, a southeasternly direction, swimming directly over the trench. And they book it, which in turn does get the attention of the Guardian, to which he lunges, propelling himself with a burst of air off in their direction. And you notice that a number of them do escape, but before one is able to, he is able to lunge out and grasp at one with his claws, and he crushes the dolphin completely in half. Uh, ha, glad that's not Nichia. Okay. So you guys are trying to get within the doorway, which is actually just like right over here. Uh, and the door is unlocked as Drydus was able to disarm the security system. You could try and, and, and sneak your way over there. I look at Drydus. So. <laughs> All right, quickly. Wallace distracted. And he begins inching his way over there, gesturing for everyone else to go before him. Stealth? Sure. Uh, 23 stealth. 38 for my stealth. We also need to roll swim checks, don't we? Uh, yes, because you only have potions of water breathing. Um, instead of using one of our potions, she gave us a certain quote-unquote spell? I rolled pretty bad for my swim check. I have a 12. 17 for swim. Tama is sinking like a stone. <laughs> no, 12, you're still, you're not sinking, but you're you're so not moving. moving very well. So, I mean, I think I have you beat Tama. This is a competition to get to the bottom of things. My stealth is a um, 6 total for the Aurora uh, Farm and she is 13. I do have a swim speed for oh, my spell. Right. You, you have a swim speed. I have 30 feet of swim speed and I can take 10 on my swim checks, okay. even while distracted or endangered. So witnessing the scene that you just did, Snow, already having a fear of the deep ocean, is absolutely petrified. Having this natural ability to move very quickly Especially right now. Especially after seeing a dolphin just get... Yeah. Uh, she abandons the stealthy approach and immediately takes the expeditious retreat option, though it does kick up a lot of turbulence. A lot of the sea shelf crumbles and debris begins falling as she just like, poof, books it towards the door. So what you're saying is I take a run action on the Yeah, pretty much. Lovely. And, and you, you just book it and you're like all the way like inside the door now. What is it, like 120 feet? Because it's 30 feet. That's No, no, no. The, the, door, the door's not even that far. No, well, you, I just get to the location. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, you make it, there. there is a door which is leading into some sort of structure. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Just swims around everybody see ya nerds <laughs> uh, and she is following I'm presuming as well and the guardian does it know oh, the guardian definitely notice and, and you're able to actually if you wanted to continue down the hallway slightly sure she's and, she's and in panic going. absolutely we've already we already know that snow hates the deep ocean and having colossal creatures swimming is like one of the worst fears so yeah she she's she's just full swimming Okay. Through door. It's a door with a short 15-foot hallway before a very quick right-hand turn up some stairs. Okay. She'll get to the stairs and turn and look back for her party. Tommy, you, you weren't able to move very far. No. I did realize I did pass the check, technically. At the very least, you're not drowning. So what is your, your base movement speed? 60. Because I am benevolent, I'm going to say you can get uh, a third of your standard movement. So you can make it just outside the door if you want it to. But remember, if you're standing there, that means someone else cannot occupy that space. I, I'm not. I'm going to stand right off to the side of the door, not quite at the door, so I'm not blocking it. Okay, you could move almost like in a, in a defensive position. Yeah. Okay, Zana, what was your swim check? 17. 17. That's a lot better than 12, so I'll give you half of your base, whatever your base movement is. So, 15... Okay, then it sounds like 15. Listen, you're not, you're not quite the athletic monster that Tama is. So yeah, you have 15 feet of movement to play with. I go towards the door. I try to grab to Kelly. I can't swim as fast. She kind of like looks at you, wondering how much of this is her problem. But it looks as if Drydus has some sympathy on the situation. And he actually makes a very different maneuver. Galaxy, get them to safety. 
Oh, now we know her name, GM. Thanks. Oh, so that's what Kelly's short for. He pulls out what seems to be almost some sort of rifle, uh, and it almost looks as if it charges with an electrifying green energy and then, like, shoots out a laser blast. And you see as this, like, pulsating green electric laser just deflects off of the back of its shell. And it crashes into the cliff shell and you just see, like, a giant hole. (laughs) As if that would have done a lot of damage, but had absolutely no effect to this creature. I'm assuming Snow can see, like, just through that line of the door from where she... So she just sees this thing fly. Oh yeah, you just see this ominous green like bolt of energy just crash into the cliff shelf and like an explosion happens. Oh my god, it has laser beams. (laughs) It's literally Atlantis all over again. Uh, You see as Kalexi swims out a little bit, not making her way to the exit. She's worried about her not boyfriend, guys. Mm-hmm. It's her brother from Shelfton. <laughs> Look, I don't know who, who blushes over their brother like that. Maybe it's a really small town, you know. It's oh, gonna, hey, you gotta repopulate the, the fish school somehow. It's a, it's a town of like three families. I feel like it's really common for like fish to interbreeds. I don't <laughs> think it matters as much. I mean, how do you even know? Yeah. Uh, Zana, you feel. Something grabs at your arm. Please tell me it's Draken. It's Draken! Like, Thank God. As he uh, sees you struggling to move and he aids you in your swim and helps you swim another 10 feet towards the door. I knew he cared. How far does he move? He decreased his movement to aid her. So he had 20 feet and he basically divided it into so he and her could both he move. He was the shove action. Pretty much. <laughs> you see Wilson kind of panic and look around. He's kind of like awkwardly slashing his glaive through the water, but then like turns, sees the giant monster, and then like looks in towards the hall and just sees Snow like sitting there panicked. A wild look in her eye. Gets that, hears her say, it has laser beams. It does not have laser beams. He does end up swimming after Snow. Wilson, why are you shouting? It almost looks as if Kalexi begins to glow. Uh, a sort of faint bioluminescence as you see there are tattoo marks running up her arms and they begin to illuminate. From it, it almost seems as if she has a thin veil around her and you can see a very similar veil beginning to appear around the Guardian as if she is casting a spell. Wow. Mm, Calm that's, emotions. That's some uh, princess power for you, huh? The giant lobster begins to almost settle down and looks as if it is about to be calm and almost go to sleep until suddenly you see it just like headbutt the ground and a giant dust cloud appears but as it settles it seems as if instead of being calmed the creature is now enraged that something tried to charm it and use a mind effect on it it naturally crit against the charm monster. <laughs> That's, uh, you don't see that very often. You don't see that very often. I was like, oh, yeah, princess powers. They're so strong. <laughs> Not today. Rydis is the closest one to it. It is. He is. Um, you can see as the guardian does begin making its way towards Rydis, uh, absolutely dwarfing this man. But as it begins stepping up, you see as this hulking giant creature careening back to to full height now. So while its body is still like... So how fast does it punch? Is it supersonic? (laughs) Does it uh, it light speed? Does it heat up the the water around (laughs) it? And make small little explosions? You can see... As Drydus is about to get pummeled into absolute oblivion, Akalexi did only cast a spell on her turn, so she uses this opportunity to speak. And with a projected and very dominating voice, she proclaims to this creature, and though it is not magical, it seems to almost have a mystical effect over the ocean itself. I, Princess Kalexi Tellis, First Princess of the Ocean and Arch Priestess of Valamos, 
do declare you guardian to stand down. Oh, we could have done this the entire time, but no, she's like, nah, we can't. Well, she's proclaiming this very loudly, and uh, I will say, Snow, I need a perception check from you specifically, as you would be the first individual to encounter such a thing. Such a thing? Such a thing. Such a thing. There is an occurrence. An occurrence, he says. Okay, so perception check 27. So there's been a lot of explosions and craters made within the last, like, theoretical, very fluid round that has occurred. You can tell that your initial stealthy approach to sneaking into the capital city has gone noticed. And there is a large amount of movement coming from the corridor, it would seem, just up at the top of the stairs where you were at the base of. So you hear a lot of commotion, guards shouting and moving into position. And you even hear one shout, Is that, is that our princess? Has Galaxy been bound? Oh god. And there are a number of individuals who you hear torrents of rushing water making their way. Some passing the stairwell that you are at, but uh, four merfolk do come swimming down and actually see you there and look absolutely perplexed. Hello. <laughs> they all just point their rifles at you. That seems very unnecessary, seeing that we are here escorting your princess back from the dangerous depths of where we found her. From Shelftown. <laughs> If you could, I'm going to have Zana and Tama roll a perception check for me. Be a 31. Nice. Perception 31. So both of you are able to flawlessly notice as this command rippled out, it seemed to almost literally make waves. You can see that the Guardian does seem to freeze in place. Drydus begins making his way back to the rest of the group, as does Kalexi as all of you are kind of now standing once again outside of this doorway. But with your perception, you two both also hear the commotion which is now happening inside the building you were attempting to sneak into, and you kind of turn around after hearing this, and you can see a number of guards are lining the windows, all firearms drawn. Well, uh, so much for our stealthy entrance, huh? You hear as the guards are exclaiming, There's the princess! We found her! Actually, we found her. Yeah, Thank actually, you. you're welcome. Thank you very much. But not only do they mention that, uh, they seem to also be pointing specifically in the direction of Drydus. Uh, but also all of the very unfamiliar and strange-looking individuals that are surrounding their princess. Oh my gosh, two legs. Yeah, pretty much. And you hear them bark, They're her captors! We're her They've kidnapped the princess! We rescued her and brought her back. Rude. You know what? You have the most horrible welcome party in all of the sea. Even Burble was better than this. As you're trying to defend yourself, Drydus actually moves forward and seems to whisper something to you. I have my hands up. You know, I'm innocent. Uh, he, he turns around to Tama and Zana, and he says, the Thessalians, for all of their many positive traits, are incredibly stubborn people. They're not going to let you in unless they are 100% sure that you are on their side. And he looks at, and then he turns to you, and he's just like, you, big strong one. Yes. Punch me in the face. Uh, okay. At how hard? Go up, just make it hurt. Make it hurt. Make, just make it hurt. Uh, okay. Just, okay. Just say, don't you dare say that about Calexia, and then punch him in the face really, really hard. Uh, how dare you say that? Yes. About. <laughs> <laughs> and you do sock him very solidly and squarely in the jaw. And you see as he kind of lurches over and he looks at Kalexi and he says, play along. No, I won't let you have her. She's my captive. Oh, no. Don't worry, Kalexi. We're, we're here for you to save you from this uh, suave man trying to steal your heart. Oh my gosh, Tama's a hero! Tama, wow, yeah. well done! 
save the prince <laughs> <laughs> diplomacy. <laughs> yeah, roll diplomacy. Did T- Tama ha- so Tama has a minus one in bluff, and I think also a minus one in diplomacy. Yeah, but you punched him. I did punch. You him. did punch him. So you, you're, you, that that was your part of the plan. Well, it's a fair point. Do you want? Bluffing or diplomacy? Um, this is absolutely a lie. So twenty-four. Um, so yeah, you can bluff thirty-seven. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> yeah, man, you're never gonna get your hands on the princess, even if your face does look like that. Yeah. Oh my god. You think just because you're good looking, you can get whatever you want? Achoo. All good looking guys these days think they're all special. And you see, as a number of the guards actually swim down from the shelf where the windows that they were peering through with their weapons looking at you, Zana, and they begin to encircle Drydus, and they look as if they are arresting him. Uh, a number of them actually, while they're arresting him, even hit him with the, the butt of their guns, and you, you hear them shouting all number of, of vile insults at him. Mermin's trash. Go back to the depths where you belong. Maybe the bottom feeders will get you there. I didn't know he was a bottle. I didn't know you could feed on his bottom. (laughs) It got worse. (laughs) Meanwhile, a number of the other guards are actively doting on the princess, making sure that she is safe and well. I would like to look upon Drydus with a look of sympathy and thankfulness. (laughs) I just pet Nachi in the back, hoping that they make no comment about about the giant (laughs) underwater wolf right now. I've, I've never seen a fish like that. It's a sea dog. It's a new species. He's exotic. You've heard of the catfish? This is its cousin, the dogfish. Gods, take him away. Put him in the political prison. He will have a degree of diplomatic immunity, but I am sure we can still try him for his crimes. I will speak to my captor later. And you see as about four guards do arrest Drydus. He is cuffed and being escorted. Meanwhile, the princess is being doted on hand and foot, but a small number of individuals do begin approaching you. But Kalexi does speak up before they, uh, as they are kind of, the guards looked like they were unsure of what to do with you five? That one we know we don't like. This one we know we like. Those ones are kind of funky. What is up we with their We don't know fins? what we like about them yet. <laughs> uh, but Kalexi speaks up. Thank you all for saving me from my captor. Oh, but of course, your majesty. I mean, bows. Tom, curtsies. Just... <laughs> Awkwardly tries to figure out what the... They can't curtsy like normal people, so it's like... Thomas fully aware of his uh, social capabilities and is just not saying a word. <laughs> of course. Think nothing of it. It was our duty. One of the guards, which seems to be uh, more heavily adorned than all of the other ones, speaks up. Thank you for rescuing our princess for such a absolutely magnitudinous event. We must show our greatest appreciation. Please, the king has been worried about his daughter. Attend with us to the throne room so that you may be given proper fanfare, an entrance to the kingdom. Is there any certain customs we need to follow or yes. we get beheaded? We, we've we run into this situation at least twice before. I just want to make sure we're acting appropriately due to your culture. Don't want to bow and like make it seem like we're, I don't know, initiating any sort of, you know, rudeness. Just, just want to make sure. We do greatly appreciate the awareness and the willingness to adjust to our culture, but please fret not for today you are our honored guests. Wonderful. So, good job, Tama. We're uh, honored guests now. And all of these individuals begin escorting you into the city. As you see, as the Guardian does actually begin slinking back towards the trench and he once again grabs the dolphin that he chopped in half and just begins like inhaling it whole. <laughs> I, I look upon in horror. I'm so sorry. I think we're just going to pretend that just went straight back to where it was something from, which is the rest of the ocean. Yeah, it totally doesn't feel pain <laughs> or suffering. <laughs> doesn't have like PTSD war flashbacks from being summoned. I wonder if the same Ankylosaurus I summon every time is the same one. He just keeps dying over and over Actually, again. has he died? I don't, he's died. I don't know if he died. I think he just got de He just stands he's, there. All he just the time, stands like... there and takes the brunt of all the attacks. He's yeah. my meat shield. 
and you are being escorted by a number of guards. You do notice that the passageway that they took you through is the back entrance that Kalexi was recommending, and it does seem as if it is more of a service entrance, not somewhere that is generally heavily trafficked, but eventually this narrow, thin, run-down hallway transitions into a much larger and grandiose atmosphere. And from the windows, you can peer down into the city below, and you see multi-storied buildings all rising up through a bustling metropolis, which has thousands of merfolk going back and forth. You see off in the distance an absolutely massive amphitheater, where it seems as if festivals are being held for music and art. You see a coliseum off in the distance, where they are doing some racing, and you can see that there are whale taxis transporting people to and fro. Oh, this uh, seems a lot better than Dark Atlantis. Black Atlantis? Dark Atlantis. But you are being escorted to one of the largest buildings by far, as it seems as if there are two towers which spiral up and stretch almost cresting the surface of the water even. They they go on for hundreds of feet. One is slightly shorter than the other. You're walking through this beautiful courtyard which actually seems to have almost a coral garden with sea anemone and all sorts of beautiful sea flowers. And you begin walking your way through an absolutely massive gate. And as the gate swings open, you hear immense fanfare. And you see this this small little, little like fish man swim up. Now announcing our honored guests with her princess, Kalexi Tellis, first princess of the ocean and arch priestess of Valabos. <laughs> Their little trumpets are in the shape of some shells. So cute. I think they are shells. Is Kalexi near us at yes. all? Yes, so Kalexi is kind of walking up uh, in walking? front of you. Okay, she's swimming up. She's she's undulating forward Thank um, you. with the more well-adorned individual, and they seem to be chatting back and forth, uh, and they are taking the lead of your party as you are kind of behind them immediately, and there are like six guards. All right, right okay, this you. is great. I'm going to cast message behind, and like point okay. at Kalexi and okay. give her the message. So I swear to God, if this whole thing was, oh, but daddy, I love him. You're only 16, child. This is going to be a problem. Was that this entire thing? I know, just don't answer me, but I'm so glad that I can do this to you from behind. Well, an individual, if you message them, is allowed to respond to the message. Is it? Yes. Yep. Beautiful. Okay, so you do get a reply. It's absolutely nothing to do with age. So it <laughs> is a relationship of romantic intent, I understand. And you begin entering in, and you see that you are standing at the base of a long throne room, but on either side of the throne room there are stands, and you see that there are a number of bustling bureaucrats and aristocrats, all very finely dressed, uh, a number of individuals filing in, very eager to see what is about to take place in the throne. <laughs> they see. And there are two chairs sat at the end of this throne room, one situated perfectly center with the room, and one slightly off to the right. And the same little fish guy begins to speak up again after even yet more fanfare. Now presenting King Yord Tellis, Supreme Overseer of the Oceans. I like how his name is Yord, as in Lord, so he's like double lorded. And his Queen Aphrosa Tellis, Supreme Highness of the Oceans and High Priestess of Valamos. Okay, I don't know why I didn't expect her to have a mom. (laughs) (laughs) What? I'm so sorry. Well, I'm just used to Disney movies where it's like only one parent ever. But well, Daddy, I love I'm, him. I'm, I'm, I mean, she's running off with another man. If you, you know, maybe his shoes at home. <laughs> He's a human. You're a mermaid. And you see a beautifully adorned queen enter in. It looks like a more older and mature variant of Kalexi herself in a beautiful, long, flowing white and golden gown. But uh, you know what? Uh, It's not even a perception check. Uh, Unless you're blind, you immediately notice something incredibly alarming. She has a wart. 
<laughs> as the king enters, it is someone familiar to you. No. It is an individual wonderfully adored with a golden crown and a, a, a pure white coral breastplate and a, a ma- yeah, he's got it like <laughs> Keep going. Why you, you just heard the word breast and wanted to laugh, you fifth grader stuff. And has a gleaming aquamarine trident in his hand. But unmistakably, as you are now recognizing the first name, this Yord is the same Yord from the island. And you that see, piece of shit. You see that crazy old man from the monkey cave. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, I didn't know your dad was insane. Um, why is the banana king here? Did you drink the potion? What are you talking? That's my father show some reference. Your father was the naked, the somewhat naked man that played with my bra on the island. What are you talking about? Does your father have a twin brother? No, he does not have a twin brother. I, I think he does. I he might, if, if I anything. I think we might have found your father's long lost brother. He has an obsession with bras. Welcome, welcome to the high court of Telly's. It's so wonderful to see all of you here in my presence, especially my beloved daughter who was lost for many times. Hold on, hold on. Can I please roll a sense motive? Sure. I would like to also. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Tom has good sense motive because it's wisdom based. Uh, is it 18? 26. 21 on my sense motive. Zana and Snow. Immistakably, either this individual has a twin brother or this is the exact same man that you met on the island, but it seems as if he is well fitted to his station and is speaking honestly. He seems composed and very official and regal in his station. Tom, you notice that while he is putting up a good appearance, it is exactly that, an appearance and not the entire truth. You can feel a slight ever faint twitch in his eye and a bead of sweat dripping down the side of his face as if he is nervous and anxious and trying to choose the right words but isn't quite sure what he's doing. Oh no, my wish pickle. <laughs> no! <laughs> no! <laughs> I want you to understand. I had a beautiful story about some King Kalos Talus. <laughs> Written out for about a month. He was supposed to be this great sea commander then and where's military. Where's the real king? The Lord only knows. As there was some magical intervention, and we now have King Yord, ladies and gentlemen. But neither of you two knows that only Jonathan has put all the puzzle pieces together. Tama gave him the most special looking pickle ever, and he just made the connection. Thomas thinking his head that is something's off and he's thinking oh no what was in that pickle <laughs> Snow absolutely leans over to Wilson Wilson yeah that's the man that was playing with my bra right uh, I'm not sure like I, he, I mean he looks very kingly he right now he seems very honest right now yeah, I feel really like I should trust what he's saying yeah I really do yeah it's very strange uh, Kalexi you're sure this is this is your dad what? I don't I... see the resemblance <laughs> it's always been your I guess you do get all of your looks from your mom huh yeah I'm pretty it's a spitting image of her but no that is my father been your father all your life huh yes wow and he never does he does he get out a lot Oh, no, no. He's very busy, like, making sure that the kingdom is functioning. I don't think he's, like, ever called on a vacation. Interesting. He's a great war hero. He's won many battles. The only time he really ever gets out is when he's, like, defending the nation against great trials and tribulations. And and he... Wow. I wonder if we can challenge him to a game for the tribe. <laughs> Thank you, thank you all for gathering here today. We are here to, of course, celebrate the return of my daughter and also honor those who saved her. And then you hear, like, raucous roar of applause. Oh, just thank uh, you, thank you. Looking a little bit weird. He's like, if he could sweat, I don't think Tama really sweats. His pores are a little too, you know. You have a funky look on your face. Are you are you constipated uh, uh, right now? Uh, uh, 
just don't don't worry about it. My dearest daughter, I am most certain that you are worn out and exhausted from the very stressful set of circumstances you have recently found yourself in. So please go and rest. As for her saviors, you shall be my honored guests. There will be a banquet, a feast, and festivities thrown in your honor. Thank you, your majesty. <coughs> and, he, and he kind of just like flips his like wavy gray hair. <laughs> uh. And is just stroking his really long beard. It's, he seems less scraggly and more well put together. But yeah, Snow is still looking at him. She's and he's looking at you and just like raising an eyebrow as well. I I point to message Snow. The message? You don't think we can like ditch the banquet and ask for like sweet equipment or you know resources? Do you? She she turns slightly to Zana. Is it rude to deny a banquet? I mean, I feel like the payout is pretty safe. I don't know. It's sort of we're in a very strange situation. I know that you're trying to have this conversation. You just hear as a clamorous bang echoes out through the chambers as the king is smashing his trident into the ground to get everyone's attention. As there's kind of a clamorous uproar in celebration for the princess returning and also in congratulation to her saviors. And you all are also murmuring amongst yourselves. Court shall be dismissed, but I would appreciate uh, if the rescuers were brought to my chamber so I may have a private audience with them. Uh, Of course, your majesty. Snow just kind of nods along still, like she's staring at him, unsure, because she's trying to like piece together as much as she possibly can, thinking like, does the twin have like that mole on the opposite side? Are they, I don't remember. This is strange. Need to see this man in short, short leave shorts and no shirt. Then I can be sure. <laughs> Seduce the king. Oh, no, no, no. I. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way to do it. The royal court will now be adjourned. More fanfare. <laughs> More fanfare. And then all of the uh, bureaucrats and aristocrats begin leaving their their stands and funneling out. All uh, numerous individuals waving at you, want to co- some coming up to like shake your hands and thank you for your great service to this nation. Thank you. Thank uh-huh. you. You're welcome. Uh-huh. Uh, but afterwards, you are approached by two merfolk guards who request to escort you to a diplomat chamber to speak with the king. Are you sure? Yeah, you mm-hmm. better leave the way, or I'm going to get lost. And they begin helping you navigate, t- leading you through this absolutely massive castle. It is large even compared to that of the Queen Rimidol's castle, Snow. Uh, but it seems all very... Wow, oh, excuse you. <laughs> but it, it, it's not so much wide as it seems to be a large spiraling building with many, many floors. It's a giant conch shell. And you make your way up until you are escorted into this room where you see that there's a balcony that oversees the entire city. And there are a bunch of wonderful, like, couches, veils, where it seems like a very quaint place to sit. Oh, wow. Penthouse view. And you're gestured to enter. Okay. We do. Okay. Oh, uh, yes. Now we'll go in. Do we see your, the King Yord there? Already, or is it just, like, open room? Uh, roll a perception check. All right. Uh, 28. 27. 17. 17. You see that this is a beautifully furnished diplomat's chambers, where it seems that there is a, a, a beautiful coral table in the center. It seems to have multiple delectables uh, in terms of food. Uh, all of them look absolutely scrumptious, but also somewhat foreign to you, but all incredibly delicious. Uh, And there are a number of couches and chairs all set around, and then these, like, wavy veils, which are kind of obscuring certain parts of the room, but it it seems to be almost as if a divider, but supposed to be more flowy and freeform as you're able to see out into the balcony. So I have a question. Mm -hmm. Are the foods, like, is it, like, vegetarian? It's seaweed? Or are we talking, like, there's fish on the table, escargot? Oh, yeah, there's, like, snails, octopus, um, sashimi. Uh, There's, there's there's, like, kelp, seaweed, but there's also is actually some fruit, even as well. Uh, You see some fumu, alao-lao fruits. 
and you're able to see. Are there off. any monkeys? There not no not monkey. food wise. There are no monkeys in here. Absolutely not no even monkeys. sea monkeys. Not even any sea monkeys. But as you all file in and begin getting yourself more acquainted to the room, the doors shut the chamber. We're so trapped. It's not like we could just swim off the balcony into the city. Uh, it doesn't seem as if it was meant to be something to trap you in this room. It was more so to give you privacy. It's really strange that there's a king that looks identical to the man on the island. The monkey king? I can't believe he is a twin. You think that? Yeah, I think they're twins. I think they got separated at a birth, but they both knew it was their destiny Maybe to become that's why kings. He cannot enter the city because he has his brother here and the king doesn't <gasps> want... Oh my gosh, you figured it out, Snow. Oh, we're geniuses. Yeah. That's, that's totally it. Tama, as you rolled the highest, uh, also, Zana, you would also notice this. Snow, you, you didn't quite roll high enough. Uh, <laughs> but all of you are kind of having your, your own conspiracy theory. As you are, you see a pair of hands grip the bottom of the couch and a head just slides out from underneath it. Are they gone? Uh, <laughs> yes. Oh, what did you do to me? What did we do to you? Oh no, you are the Monkey King, aren't you? I was around about 72 hours ago. And now you're the Mermaid King? How did you upgrade that quickly? Um, um, uh, what, what happened exactly? Well, you see, and there's just like this whole big flashback series. <laughs> I was having my monkeys give me a pedicure in my jacuzzi back in my chambers on the island as I was delectably eating a fruit. And you know what I thought to myself. I thought, hmm, this is a very sweet fruit. You know what would balance that out very well is the salty vinegar flavor of a pickle, which I had not had in ages. And I was saving this for a very special occasion. And I thought, you know, it would be a great time to treat myself as I reminisce and think about all the strange events that had undergone. And I began fantasizing about all of my wildest dreams and wishes. And as I chopped down on a pickle, I was quite suddenly thrust into a position where I was in the middle of court talking to individuals about how I'm supposed to invade some Merminskian outpost as they are slaughtering thousands of our farmers. So you're not the king. Where's the king? How much of the pickle is left? Oh, well, I, I, I swallowed them whole. You swallow pickles whole? Well, yeah, they just slide right down your throat. Um, uh, did, did the pickle at least taste good? Oh, it's the best pickle I've ever had. Oh, I well, also have to say that I've only probably had like seven pickles, and it was like 20 years ago. But from my memory, this was the best one. I'm, I'm glad. Yeah. Might want to consider not giving out any more pickles. Or only yeah. give strangers. them out to us. You know, I mean, look, like, you can't keep handing your pickle out to strangers, bud. Yeah, there's I, a boundary there. It's, the, the pickles didn't do anything that crazy. Now, the strange thing is, while I recognize no one, everyone believes me to be their husband or their father or their king. Dude, you got a hot wife now? They also didn't think anything about you having two legs. Surprisingly, this is okay. How does it work? I don't know. I have this trident. It seems very strong and powerful. Hey, hey bud. It, as long as I'm holding on to this, I can pretty much control the currents of the ocean. Hey, um, we, you're in the city, though. I need this to breathe back on. You're in the city, though, right? Yes, I am in the city now. Thomas solved your problem. Congratulations. Well, and I am very appreciative. I did want to come here, but I wanted to come here to sell all of my stuff so I could be rich and famous. My problem is now is I am rich and famous, but I have no idea what I'm doing or how to run a kingdom. Um, well, if you, you can hire an advisor. You could abdicate the throne. Yeah, we should probably find the real king. Oh my gosh. Did he That's switch why... with the real king? Is the real king back on Margaret now? Can he breathe on land? Does the real king believe that he's the monkey king now? We need so, to to Margaret. you would say, oh, just hire an advisor. Have I, I would... them to do all of your yeah. work for you. People in power don't actually do anything, which is exactly what I thought. But apparently, one of the primary customs in order to finish off wartime traditions is to have a trial by combat where the two nations' leaders will fight to the death. Oh, so you really just saved the king's life. Well, apparently. 
Well, I... And I am now sitting in his stead, about to be murdered! I would say you're in quite a pickle. Wait, so... so what... Who's the, who's the enemy nation you're fighting? The Merminskian people. Oh, do you think that's uh, Drydus's people? Probably. Why don't you just not fight them? Ooh, ooh, I got it. Why don't you just not fight them and unite your nations by marrying off your daughter to their... Well, um, your, your daughter. We're going to put air quotes around that. You could... Yes. You don't have to fight anybody. You just need a wedding. A, a unification instead of a battle. You, you're, you're a great leader. War, war is beneath you. As long as the pre-wedding doesn't involve betting the other ruler, you should be fine. Okay. It's not a bad idea. However, I will say that make qualm the Merminskian people... But the Thessalians really don't like them. Tell them to suck a monkey, all right? I don't know if that is either regal or actually has any meaning behind it. You can convince them that they're better by accepting them. Phrase it like a a social thing, like you're socially uncool if you hate these guys anymore. Only the socially, you know, astute and respectable people can respect their differences, but then they get this sense of pride about them. They're like, oh, I'm so good. I accept everybody. And then they get to keep their ego. Let's find out why, why they hate these Marminskian people. Oh, yeah, that might be. Is it because if it's just fish scales or if it's just like, oh, this this previous ruler in a long time history messed something up on the other side for those people. Just again, a union, which is already set up because they were moon. You know, the the couple was moonlighting on your Uh little island. Oh, sure. No, no. Perfectly. Well, you see, the thing is, is I've been informed that (laughs) Let, let me see. And, and you see he pulls out a notebook and starts flipping through a bunch of pages. And then he also holds up his trident and you see bubbles of water begin to appear. But they almost turn into mirrors and you see moving pictures and images in them. Supposedly, Calexi Talis was to be betrothed to one Aristos Erman, who is a high-ranking, pompous prick who I absolutely hate. I don't know who was here before me, but for some reason they thought that this individual was suitable for their daughter. I, I, I think it was some political hoobla. Point is, though, he's not Rominsky. From my understanding, Kalexi actually does like a Rominsky individual, Drydus Tismos. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's pretty chill, actually. Is he poor? No, actually, he's not. <laughs> he is what, from one of the high-ranking Maminskian households from the council. He is the uh, one of the council leader's sons. The problem is... And you, you see it pan over to another screen. This is Drydus's father, and you see him on uh, a panel of 12 other council members. So they're a council... Nation. They're a council nation. But you notice that while you see Drydus's father standing there very politely, there is one individual who, behind his council seat, seems to be giving a very enigmatic speech, roaring up the populace. Uh, And he seems to be currying a lot of favor with the average Merminskian individuals. I wonder if either this is one of Camille's men or it's another administrator. That individual, Ends Northain. Northain? Ends Northain. Uh, uh, what? Ends Nor? How do you spell it? E N S N O R, Ends Northain. But his son is Erostos Ermen? No, 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 no. I'm so lost. There's too many names. Well, yeah, there are a lot of people being thrown around all at once. Trust me, I've also had to digest this in the past, like, 72 hours. Oh, that's why you have the notebook. That's why I have the notebook. Smart. Uh, Ends Northane here. He is kind of leading a populist uprising of the Meminsky nation. Uh, they had been a council-based diplomacy for many, eh, long time at this point. But they are being increasingly dissatisfied with their treatment from the Thessalian nation. 
as they claim to not be at fault for all of the many atrocities which have befallen us. What? What atrocities? Oh, yes! And he goes over to the next slide, pretty much. And you see in another bubble, as there, you see a sign that says, Welcome to Shelfton. Uh, and there are, is a giant clam field. Oh, it's real. But you see as it looks like the entire clam field is decayed with a blight. You go over to another slide and you see the whale taxis that you saw uh, swimming through the city, but they seem to be traversing long distances going from one city to another. But in the middle of their travels, you see giant harpoons are shot through them, striking them dead, and all of the occupants are born. You see one of the guardians dead on the seafloor with giant bites taken out of it, and it almost looks as if its shell was crushed. So, um, you you guys blame the Merminskians for all this? They have that type of quote-unquote technology, firepower, whatever you so, want to call it? what we're talking about is we need another scapegoat. But is it really a scapegoat? Because it probably is the situation that's causing this. It's the Qualupalooks. Well, you see, the problem with that is the Qualupalooks are Merminskian. Ah, well, oh. Oh, this makes us really awkward because they technically are working for an evil organization. Well, now you see why I'm in a political pickle. Hold on, I need to clarify. Are all Kuala Paluks uh, uh, Merminskian or are just some Merminskians Kuala Paluks? Are they the one and the same? I don't. Oh, I damn. got here 72 hours ago Let's after sip. eating a pickle in a hot tub. What part of that makes me qualified to answer these questions? Wait a second, wait a second. Don't Kuala Paluks form from taking hostages of land dwellers? So are, they, so are we Maminskians at heart? <gasps> I'm half Merminskian. I was actually a Merminskian once. Me Dra and Draken. Draken, tell Draken. him. Draken. Please, don't say that around these people. This is very complicated. Oh, this got I forgot worse. about. I forgot about. Did the you racism. forget about the racism? I did forget about the racism. Wait, wait. So why would a marriage not solve the situation? Because okay, that's like saying. Oh, yes, uh, people really don't like pigs because they eat your garden. So you know what our solution is? We're just going to have you marry a pig. Like, people don't like that conceptually. Mm -hmm. But what if the princess likes that conceptually? Well, that's fine to eat their own. If you want to be married to a pig, you can go and do that. But... That sounds a that little racist. It's not really good for public image. The standard people would think you're weird. Right. Uh, so tell the I don't... king, tell the public they're wrong. <laughs> Uh, wait, never. We we, we don't we don't want you to get you know, overthrown within I mean, the first two days. At all. If you got overthrown, then somebody else would have to take over and deal with it. Just, just yes, say. but then I lose all of my like fame, riches, and fortune, which is kind of like what I came here to do. What if you instantiated a law saying, "Oh no"? Then we're starting to get into very, very deep and dark territories here with restriction of speech. Um, yes. Okay. Here is my plan. You have one. I cooked this up just now. You know, we really could use that wish pickle to solve this whole problem. I all, It has already been processed. It is no longer a pickle. It is now part of the environment. Okay? It is fertilizer for the muscle farms. <laughs> How does muscles. it work? <laughs> one muscle is really big and powerful compared to all the other muscles. <laughs> World's best fertilizer. <laughs> Enz Northane is the rising populist leader in the Maminskian kingdom. But he is not the only voice for the Maminskian people. All we need to do is get him out of the equation, then barter a diplomatic marriage, and most importantly, we need to make sure that all of the various attacks against the Celia actually cease after the diplomatic marriage. Because if they continue, then all of the Thessalonian people are going to assume that the Merminskians did the diplomatic marriage to usurp the throne and overthrow the government while still committing terror attacks, which is kind of a problem. See, there, there's a major problem there. We could probably 
do you still have that potion I gave you? What? Yeah, yeah, yes. Could I have that back? I actually have a sure. great plan. Thank you. Yes, we turn him into a monkey. We don't kill him. We just put this in his drink, and then he turns into a monkey. He loses his political power. He's a monkey. He's a sea monkey. All right. Wonderful. I don't care how we you also, do uh, We also definitely do still need to... So, to make sure the attacks don't happen anymore, we need to find out who's doing them. That would probably be very pertinent. I mean... We have, we, I mean, we know who's doing them. Yeah, Tom, the location which we're going to have to go. So basically, to solve all the world's problems, we have to go and destroy this thing. Yeah. So either way, we have to overthrow a nation. Listen, if at the very least you could prove that it wasn't the Mominsky people, or at least some, like, small subsect of them that we could all mutually denounce... Yes, I mean, there's nothing, from what I know, there's nothing that uh, makes people that don't like each other get along is someone that they both dislike more than each other. Someone they can both hate. Do you have movers? Movers. Movies. Videos. I have. Recordings. Things that can play back. They don't have the technology. They have the the bubbles, but I'm pretty sure those have to be like... Um, who is that? I don't know. How does the bubbles work? How does, I, don't, I wave my trident around, and I ask it to show me something. Mm. If we could find kind of the group that's doing it, is there? we could maybe broadcast it using the trident. Sure. I absolutely have those capabilities as long as I have the trident. Well. What if we had the trident? What so if you, you let us fall? Then I suffocate. Oh, we can make you not we suffocate. We can de- fix How that. How do you think we're breathing? Your daughter could fix it. All right, all right, all right, all right. Listen, if you saw, uh, if we can get Esnor Thane out of the picture and arrange the diplomatic marriage, I will give you the trident. Uh, all right. Okay. Right. So. We get, our plan's basically, we got like three big steps, right? Right, perfect. So we need Drydus. I'm sorry, is it he a political war criminal right now who's yeah, charged so. with kidnapping? Well, he's also our pawn. Yes, and also you can pardon him. You're the king, which well, would be we, a or, great first step to mending relations. Or, or what if you just say that you're using him... It's, you um, could say after you find out they've spent a night together, now they... Uh, <laughs> now uh, the... Uh, well, little no. fish eggs? <laughs> oh, no. Or, uh, we could, you could just say that you're uh, sending him with a party as leverage against the other nation. We are diplomats from another nation, speaking of which, so we can... Act. All right, all right, fine, fine, whatever. I'll, I'll see what I can do. I'll see if I can send you with Drydus to the Mabinskian capital as a diplomatic envoy. All right, and then we uh, get the one guy out of the picture, arrange a marriage, and then keep an army from killing things. Right, so we get the trident, we save the world. Yeah. After we... How does the trident help you save the world? Well, it's going to keep the trident. It solves a lot of problems. Just understand that. Okay. Yes? I don't know. Do you expect me to know where to go from here? Do you not know your way around the castle? Because I can't help you with that. We, we, <laughs> the guards escort him everywhere. <laughs> he, he, he swims up to the door, opens it. Sheldon! Then you see the, the well-adorned big guard come by. Yes, my lord. Take me to my chambers. Wait, your majesty, uh, about uh, yes. the, 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 the prisoner. Oh, yes. Sheldon! I'm standing right here, my lord. <laughs> Uh, Make sure that they are escorted to the diplomatic prison. Not to be prisoners. You can't phrase it like that, Yord. uh, Make sure that they are allowed entry to visit the diplomatic prison. Thank you. There you you go. Good job. All right. Yes, my lord. Uh, So make sure you write that thing that we need so we can take that person... Oh, yes, I'll see. I'll, 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 get, I'll get to that as well. ASAP, before you have to fight to your death. Oh, that's not scheduled to, like, next Tuesday. Okay, so we have time. Yeah, like a week. All right, let's get our sea legs. And see you that's later, about, York. Uh, that's about two days per objective. Right. The question is how long it's going to take. We need to go talk to Drydus. And you are escorted by some guards all the way down 
spiraling even further. You, you realize eventually you do get to the courtyard floor, and then you keep descending stairs further down until eventually you have a very different set of circumstances as you are led down to a diplomatic prison. I want to tell our guards, uh, j- just so you know, Yord said, uh, <clears throat> His Majesty said, we're not staying here. We, you know, this is just like a visit. I think our rooms are being prepared up there. Do you know where that is after we're done? Uh, I don't know. Oh, darn. Oh, it's okay. Somebody else probably knows. That's right. the that's the best thing about working in a palace. Yes. If you don't know, Someone somebody else, else yeah. does probably know. It's okay. Right. I... Just let them know we are diplomats from another nation. Let who know? I don't who do you who do you work for? The king. <laughs> you want me to let the king know? That you are diplomats from another nation? No, he already knows that. Very well. That is uh, true, as I have been informed. I- I'm so sorry. I, di- I didn't mean to confuse you. <laughs> I'm sure one of the housekeeping staff is probably preparing your room. You know, that's that's probably who we need to Right. Do. Okay. Well, so you're taking note of where we're going, right? Downstairs. Thank you. <laughs> and you get to this dark, dingy cell that does have a bed, a stand, uh, and a table, but you can see that the the prison bars only look out into the dark abyss, and there is Drydus standing by them, looking out into the trenches below. So, how's it going? How does it look it's going? Hey, buddy. Hmm, Well, don't worry, we got you out of here. It's gonna be fine. What do you you mean, you got me out of here? Uh, Well, Well, guess who's getting married? It's what? you. Not, not, he, not. He looks at the two, only two women here and, like, kind of grimaces. Ugh. No, 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 no. Not to us. Movies. Your princess. What? I feel like a matchmaker. It's great. Yes, you're going to... Okay. We'll Basically, talk about this later. it's the last step of a three-step process. Yes. But, uh... Was it the last or second to last? It's the second it to the last. Same? See, we've needed your expertise on the... Uh, I got, could you give us some privacy? We're in the middle of a, a diplomatic arrangement oh, oh, that, that was ordered by the king. We need some privacy to interrogate this prisoner. Sure, right away. And, and they both just like scuttle away up the stairs. <laughs> so, yeah. Congratulations. Any preference on a wedding present? Do you have any? What did you do? Everything and nothing. And I think that is where we're going to end it for this week's episode of The Odd Campaign. Thanks, Foundlings, for listening to this week's episode of The Odd Campaign. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to leave us a rating and review on your favorite podcast listening app, whether that is Podbean, Podchaser, Spotify, or even YouTube, if you are one of our very few YouTube subscribers. We thank you and do appreciate all of the support that you give us. Speaking of which, if you want to support us in other ways, please be sure to interact with us on our social media. You can find us on X and Instagram at RollFound, and you can even join our Discord server and chat with us directly. We are on there all the time playing games, having fun, and we love interacting with fans and asking you what your favorite moments are from the podcast. So please be sure to share that with us. Anyways, uh, I wanted to make sure that we give a special thank you and shout out to all of the individuals who left us with music and ambiance for today's episode that really helped make the scene come alive. And all of those links are going to be down in the description below. So please be sure to check them out so you can make your role-playing games come to life with some beautiful, beautiful music. Anyways, this has been your friendly neighborhood GM here, and I will see you all next next week on The Odd Campaign. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Bye.